Good morning everyone and welcome to the morning report. It's Mrs Tolly here again. Unfortunately, Miss Hollinshead is at home still having difficulties with her morning report because her internet is not working correctly at the moment. Fingers crossed she gets it, gets it up and running soon. But for today, you're going to have to listen to Mrs Tolly again. At least Miss Hollinshead put some lovely storytelling videos on for you on our YouTube channel. So that's good news. She's also, if you go into slideshow, onto the presentation, you can see a little button here that you can press and you can listen to the morning report music okay okay let's look at today's date let's read it together are you ready Thursday the 26th of March 2020 we've already had Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday so today is Thursday can you remember how many days in the week did we say that's correct, seven. Let's sing our days of the week song. Are you ready? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Each day different and every day new. What's right, the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? All together, all together. What's the weather like today? Fresh and dry, and lots of us have enjoyed lots of nice time in the garden. Okay, I want you to check if the weather is still the same today. It may have changed. Go and run to your nearest window, or have a look outside the door, and have a little think about what the weather looks like. Sometimes the weather can start off one way but change during the day. So if you see a change in the weather, have a little ch chat to a grown up about what the weather is like at that moment. Miss Holly said has put us some lovely slides on. Again, you can click it on our PowerPoint. What's the weather like today? If you can't access our PowerPoint, you can have a little look on YouTube for the links that we've put on. Well, it certainly feels like spring at the moment. I really, really hope the weather stays like this so we can get out and have some fresh air while we're spending time at home. Have a little look in your garden to see if you can see any new signs of spring. Signs of spring can pop up super, super quickly. One day it might not be there and the next day you might notice it. So have a little look to see if any leaves are starting to come back on your trees or maybe some of the flowers are starting to grow. If you haven't got a garden, have a look outside your window or on your balcony or outside your door to see if you can spot any signs of spring anywhere else. Miss Holly said again has put a lovely slide on. This is a number blocks spring song. So you can have a click on our link if you can access our PowerPoint. But again, if not, head over to YouTube and have a look at the number blocks spring song. <laughs> Join in this time, are you ready? Get your candle. Puff the candles on the pink, pink cake. Puff the candles on the pink, pink cake. Puff, puff, puff. Okay, so our phoneme of the day for phase two is P, and that was our Jolly Phonic song. Right, we've got some words to read together today, okay? So have a little look. If you can read the words by yourself, that's absolutely fantastic. You could pause me and read them to an adult. But if you want to read along with me, let's sound them out together. Are you ready? I'm going to do my robot arms, OK? P-E-T. Well done. Pet. P-E-T. Pet. Let's go on to the next one. P-A-N. Listen again. P-A-N. Pan, excellent. Pan, pan. Next one, are you ready? Use your robot arms with me. P, a, n. P, n. Pen, brilliant. Next one. P, ig. P, ig. Pig. I'm going to leave that last one at the end for you to use your robot arms and have a go with a grown up. Grown ups, if the children are too young to read the phonemes and blend the words, maybe you could do some sound talk to them and you could say, pet. What am I saying? Pet. Pet. 
phase three. Take an X-ray. Take an X-ray. Take an X-ray. X-ray on my hand. Okay, our phase three phoneme for today is X and X looks a little bit like a cross. You can see the X looks a little bit different on our phoneme of the day today and that's because it's a precursive X and this is to help us with our cursive writing, our joined up writing when we get into the big school. Okay, let's have a look at X. Now, X is a difficult one. There are not many words that start with this sound. Mostly, you will find the X in the middle or the end of a word. We're going to do some reading all together, okay? I'm going to use my robot arms and I want you to join in. Are we ready for the first one? Six. Six, well done. I can count six flowers in the garden. Let's have a go at the next one. Ox. Fox. I saw a fox late at night. I saw a fox late at night. Are you ready for the next one? But ox box. I put my toys back in the box. Well done. Fix. Fix. Excellent. Fix. Mrs. Tolly had to fix her gate as it had broken. I'm going to leave the last one to you. Remember to use your robot arms, have a go at reading it and then say a sentence that has that word in. Now, because it's Thursday, you all know our number of the week because we've practiced it every day. I want you to go and tell a grown up or someone next to you very quickly. What's our number for today? That's right, it's 19. We've had some really good activities with number 19 this week, but for today, what I want you to do, I want you to find some building blocks or Lego blocks or anything, any toy that you have at home that maybe you could put into a tower. And I want you to build blocks of 19. So let's see if we can do 19 Legos or 19 Duplo, 19 building blocks, whatever you can, whatever you can find, you can build a block of 19. Our shape of the week is a square. Who can remember anything about a square? Who can describe what a square looks like? Or who can remember some of those special words that we call properties to explain and describe the square? I'm going to have a little look now. I can see four equal sides. Remember the word equal means they're all the same length, they're all the same size, they're equal. I can also see one, two, three, four, four pointy corners. This week we've been looking at lots of squares around us. We found chocolate bars, windows, tables, cushions, bowls, crackers, lots and lots of squares everywhere. Today I want you to see if you can make me a square using something at home. Ask a grown-up what you are able to use. Maybe you could get some pasta shells. Maybe you could get some of your toys. Maybe you could get some um, packets of something out the kitchen. Whatever the grown-up says you can have, see if you can position them in the shape of a square. Let's see who can be the most imaginative and make the most wonderful square out of household items or things around your house that you can spot. OK, the word of the week. Who can remember? It begins with a s sound. Who can remember the word season? Well done. Now, today's literacy task is all about our word of the week. We're going to be talking about the season of spring. So it might be a good idea if you click on our links or have a look at YouTube for any rhymes or stories or anything that can help you with our hunt all about spring. What sign am I making? Well done, house. What sign is this? Watch again. Home. Well done, our Makaton sign for the week is house and home. 
Our value of the week is forgiveness and we've read some lovely stories with forgiveness in them and we've talked about forgiveness lots. Today I have put some other activities on that link to different values that we're going to talk about in just a moment. So let's see how many lovely values you can use today at home. Sit back, relax and enjoy another wonderful story read by Miss Hollingshead. This is our well-being page. Remember, Mrs. Tolly talked yesterday about our well-being and how important it is to be healthy, not just by doing exercise, but also healthy in our mind and feeling really happy and well in ourselves. So this is the task for today. We would like you to show the value of helpfulness and cleanliness. What we're going to do is ask you to ask your grown up or whoever's in your house with you if you can do a job for them. We want you to complete it really, really well, making sure you try really hard to impress them. Now, at our school, we have got some incredible children who tidy the classroom wonderfully every day and we are super proud of them. So we want to show your grown ups at home how helpful we can be. And by thinking about the value of cleanliness, we can help our grown ups to keep our house clean, to keep all those germs far away. Now, this is the slide for PE. This is where we talk about keeping fit and healthy and strong and having exercise. OK, so today we are going to take part in some yoga. Yoga is really, really good for our fitness and our well-being as well. But fitness wise, it makes us really strong inside. It makes our muscles toned. It makes us really flexible and nice and fit and healthy. So I want you to ask a grown up to go onto YouTube and type in cosmic yoga. Boys and girls, you'll be really used to doing this because we do this every week at school. So I want you to find cosmic yoga, find your favorite session on the cosmic yoga site, and I want you to take part in a yoga session. Maybe you could ask a grown up or your brothers and sisters to join in with you. Have lots of fun and keep on stretching and get nice and flexible. Our literacy task for Thursday is all about our word of the week, season. So I want you to remember all the things we've learned about seasons this week, OK? And we're going to write about the season of spring because we've seen lots of things starting to show. And also we've seen lots of links on YouTube on different websites all about springtime. OK, now, if you are from Mrs Tolly's school, then you know if you're a fox, an owl, a hedgehog, a squirrel or a rabbit. Grown-ups, if you're not sure yet, please dojo us and we will let you know what group your child's in. If you're not from our school but you want to use our YouTube channel, that is fantastic. So ask a grown-up to read all the different descriptions in the different animal names and you can choose one to suit. OK, so foxes, you're going to be writing three or more sentences if you can. Remember as independently as possible. OK, use your face two and your face three sounds. Have a go yourself first before or asking a grown up. Owls and hedgehogs, I want you to write two sentences or more if you can. Now you can have a really good go at using your sounds you've learnt so far in phase three. If you're a little bit unsure, use your word maps, your sound maps that we sent home, okay, to help you with your writing and ask a grown up to check if your spelling is correct. Squirrels, you're going to draw me a beautiful picture of springtime. Remember all the things we've talked about? We've talked about so far the flowers and the leaves coming back on the trees. We've talked about the warm weather. Soon, hopefully, we'll be able to see new life starting, like new animals being born. So draw a beautiful picture and have a little go at writing some words to match your pictures. If you draw a daffodil, think about what sound daffodil starts with. D -d daffodil and you could put a dirt by the side and then if a grown-up writes daffodil for you you can have a copy underneath to help your pencil control rabbits we want you to talk about spring watch all the spring links again so you can learn all about it and then when you've watched all the links and had a little chat you can draw a beautiful picture today rabbits we want you to make sure you're practicing your name writing okay Good luck and have fun, everyone. But don't forget when you are writing a sentence, first of all, it needs to make sense. Read it back and make sure it makes sense. Also, 
I want you to remember your capital letters, your finger spaces and your full stops and have a really good go at using all those phase two and phase three sounds in your phonics. Good luck. Our maths task for Thursday is going to be about shape, space and measure. We've done lots and lots of number work this week, but we're going to have some fun with shape, space and measure. Now, Mrs Tolly thought while the weather is really nice, we're going to have some fun with maths outdoors. OK, and we're going to play with capacity. So what you need to do, you, ask, you need to ask a grown up first for permission to see if you can borrow a washing up bowl or a water tub or a bucket or you might have some water play already at home. And then you need to find some jugs and some pots and some and some containers to fill the water in. OK, maybe if you haven't got some jugs and pots at home, you could look in the recycling and you could use pot bottles or plastic butter tubs. OK, and what you're going to do, you're going to have a play with the water and you are going to think about these mathematical words. OK, this is our mathematical language that we are looking at today. We need to use the words full and empty and half full. You can think about more and less or double. And also you can use your estimation. You can have a guess. Remember, estimation is to have a really good, sensible guess. So you could say, I wonder how many cups it is going to take to fill this big bucket. You can have a guess and then you can actually scoop the water and measure. And let's see how close your estimation was. OK, right. If you have chance and you have played lots with capacity, why don't you have a little go at floating and sinking? Right, I want you to get some objects, some objects that you think might float on the top of the water and some objects that might sink to the bottom. Have a little guess. Having a guess is like called um, a prediction. OK, so you're going to predict which items will float and which items will sink. And then when you've had a guess, I want you to test it out. And then we can see if your guess was correct and you can put a little pile of things that float and a little pile of things that sink. If you do want to keep up on top of your number work, remember you've got all the links counting in twos, counting in tens, counting backwards, and you have got your number formation to practice as well. Lots to keep you busy. Let's hope this weather stays nice so we can get outdoors and have some fun with capacity. But remember, if you can't get outdoors or you haven't got a garden and you want to do it, ask a grown up first. But maybe you could do it in the kitchen or on a tiled floor that could wipe up. Maybe you could ask for a towel to put the water on first so you don't make a big mess for your grown up. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you so much, boys and girls. You're doing a really, really good job. Just a little note for the grown ups. We really appreciate all the wonderful feedback we've had. I've had some lovely messages today from parents at my own children's school, from colleagues at my work, from friends, from family. So thank you. We really appreciate it. I just wanted to say one thing before I go. I just wanted to say that routine for little ones is so important. And by using this as a morning time routine and giving them a little little bit of normal in this very surreal situation we're in at, at the moment is super, super important. We know if it helps them, it helps you. If your child's happy, then the parent's happy. So we're doing it for everyone. So please continue to watch, help those children have their little minds ticking over, give them something to focus on. And also mainly it gives you a little bit of a break. So thank you. Have a lovely, lovely day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.